Reisner and I have I built CMR cigar box guitars and I'm going to show you kind of a basic kit with a neck on the box kind of guitar acoustic nothing fancy you can do whatever you want you can if you want to build one you can add anything you want to it personalize it do whatever I mean there's no there's really no limits to what you can do with them I mean that's that's what draw had drawn me to the things in the beginning because there were they were easy, they were a cool guitar, and you can really, you can personalize them and, and, and kind of go anywhere you want with them. I mean, art, it's, it's sort of an art thing. It's, it's, it's more of, of art and guitar put together, and that's why I really found it interesting as in being, I can be more artistic. I'm a mechanic for a living. I've, I've worked on stuff for ever since 1976 when I graduated from school, and after a while, the whole engine and parts and all that thing just kind of fell into me building guitars because I added a whole lot of different stuff to them using parts from from work and, and that kind of thing to them and added to them and it just kind of made them mine. What we're going to do is we're going to make a guitar that's like this. Basically this is the one I put together just to show. It's going to be like this. The neck screwed inside the box, supported. I left the back open so you can you can see what it looks like inside. Uh, tuned open G, um, and then marked the frets and everything. And it's a thirty, it's a thirty-inch um, scale. I made, I have a half a dozen kits. I don't have a ton of them. Um, and the kits, I made the kits up the same thing I'm using here. There's boxes if you want a box. It's twenty-five bucks for the kit, the box, and then you just have to go get yourself like four foot of whatever kind of one by four neck you want to put in it and, and go from there. But all the other stuff, all the screws and the tuners and the nut and the bridge and everything is in the box. So I thought it would be kind of an easy thing after you watch and see how I make it. If you want to buy a kit, you can, you know, make one. I pre-drilled some of the stuff and then I'll just explain when I go through that, you know, that's what you have to do. I, it was easier to drill some of the stuff and make it go a little bit faster than, than trying to be sitting here for an hour when we could be listening to music or something. <laughs> so you need a 36 inch piece of wood to, basically for a neck and that's if you're doing any kind of other scale lengths it's about 36 inches and you end up cutting some off. So I made a template um, and the template has on has holes in it for where the tuners would be drilled and it also has holes for the tailpiece for where you put the tailpiece uh, string holes and it's six inches from the top end of the neck to the nut is basically about where I start on them and then you go from there you can make them shorter make them longer you know you can do whatever you want to do with them but that's where I've kind of settled in with six inches and um, you can take and put the temple you know, the temple on there and mark your six inches and mark a, a, a line for your for your, where your nut would be and mark your holes for your strings or for your tuners and then drill a quarter inch hole for the tuners. Um, included in the box and also in the box there's a 23 inch scale length that you have to just trim it and tape it together at the seventh fret and then you could lay it on and, and, uh, and go from the nut or which is marked with an N and you can lay it on and, and measure out your uh, 23 inch scale. So. Um, on the way. So I guess I'll mark the scale and then we'll go down. I should, like I said, I marked the bottom of the neck and they're just with the template and you can drill three holes in the bottom for the string, uh, the strings to go through. We'll, we'll go there in a second. It's blowing around. It's a little easier to use, a little more hand tools. And, uh, you take and lay your, your template on, line the end up with your, your nut line and lay the template out down your neck towards your box. Um, um, and then you can mark that out. Um, when we um, explain it, you're going to have to we'll have to mark where the box goes on the neck before you can cut it all completely off. That's one thing I didn't didn't go into. Um, but I take a square and just run a square across the uh, across your neck and uh, mark where all the frets are, starting from the nut down. If you lay it on there and hold the paper down, you're right against your line, and you can just you can just draw across and have a straight line. 
across your neck where each fret is going down the going down your neck. After you mark it, you can always go and um, mark them with a marker. Or I went and marked that one with a marker the other day, and it was a big uh, sharpie, and the, the ink just soaked right into the wood, so it ended up being kind of wide. But they're easy to see that way. Charlie, are you a musician? I play. I'm not like I need guys like Steve and stuff to make me really look good. <laughs> I play, but I don't. I don't go out and play anywhere. I'm. I play at the house, and I. I've been just been blessed that I've got a lot of guitar players that have my guitars in Nashville and, and Knoxville and and down in the Keys and, and all over the place. And Steve and some other people in, in Jacksonville and stuff. That I just. I always say that I'm. Not everybody has had the luck that I've had and been blessed to meet as many great musicians that. That have my guitars and play them on stage all the time, and that's for me. That's just been a great thing. So, after you mark the neck down with your uh, from the nut all the way down your fretboard, then you can go across. And now I'll just go take the whenever you want to do it. You don't have to do it right now, but I will take a marker or whatever you want to mark it with and go completely across now and you can put your frets completely across. But the, the paper is marked that is off a fret calculator, off the computer program that makes the fret, makes whatever scale length you want with 21, 22 frets you can mark, it'll, it'll print it out and then you have to cut it and put it together and make it, you know, to make it one length. So I'll go down, I'll mark the frets real quick with a small sharpie and then we'll measure for where the box sets and the uh, the screws uh, holes where your strings go it's a little kind of time consuming when you're listening to music in your shop it don't seem like it takes that long so I did mark on this I didn't take the box and I kind of marked it the box um, you can put it on the front you can put it on the back. I build them. I build them both ways, and they they sound pretty cool. It's it's sometimes not as good as the, as putting the neck through the box and have it inside, but it, it it's it's kind of a neat guitar. And the first couple guitars that I, like the second and third guitars that I had built, were a, were designed like this. Was a neck on the box kind of thing. So um, I pre-drilled the holes. You can drill any kind of sound holes you want. Just pick your size. Two or three, you can do as many as you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, are you using, and then, are you using a Forstner bit for that? Uh, I have, well, I have some Irwin, some regular hole saws with with uh, the teeth on the outside. Um, okay. And them things, if you go real light on them, they they make a nice clean cut and they cut right right into the box and make a nice they make a nice hole. I sometimes I do put a lot of sound holes, screw stuff on the outside, cover them up. Um, but, so if you mark mark the box where in the center of the box where you where the uh, get ahead of myself on mark measuring 23 inches or whatever your fret your scale is and put a line on your box back up to 23 23 inches so you know what your scale length is and then when you put it on the box you can put it in the middle or toward you know. The, Third of the box, maybe from the end. It, you can do it wherever. Sometimes it's the sound is different. You get closer to the center of the box, um, and then you can just center the center the uh, the neck in, and that's where you will end up screwing when you when you do it. I usually do an inch, inch and a half, two inches out the back of the box when I do the necks like this, and then you drill your sound hole or your sound your sound, sound holes, uh, your holes for your uh, strings to go through from the back. And leave it a hang the tailpiece hang out the back of the box. Um, so this I pre I decide where you're going to put your box, and then you can can lay your box on the neck and mark it. And that's what I did already. I put the marks on here where the box was going to sit um, when you put it on there, and then mark the center of your box and stuff where your bracket's going to go on the inside when you get ready to sound it. So. I got this marked, I got know where my nut is, and I'm going to drill three holes in the back for the, the strings to go through, which with this kit, 
I'm putting washers on the end of the string so you can just drill like a, an eighth, eighth inch or a little bit smaller hole and the strings won't pull through the, won't pull through the neck. Um, I already pre-marked these so I mean you know, all I gotta do is just drill them through and uh, 